Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss about the glaucoma and aqueous humor. So, aqueous humor is produced from the plasma by the ciliary epithelium of the ciliary body pars pellicata using a combination of active and passive secretion. A high protein fibrate filtrate passes out of fences, concentrated capillaries ultra filtration into the stroma of the ciliary processes from which active transport of solutes occurs across the dual layer ciliary epithelium the osmotic gradient thereby stabilized facilitates the passive flow of water into the posterior chamber secretion is subject to the influence of the sympathetic nervous system with opposing action of mediated by beta 2 receptors increase secretion and alpha 2 receptors decrease secretion enzymatic action is also critical carbonic anhydrase is among those are playing a key role so now we will discuss about the anatomy of aqueous flow the trabecular mass work is a sieve like structure at the angle of the anterior chambers through which 90% of aqueous humor leaves the eye. It has three components. The uveal meshwork is the innermost portion consisting of cord-like endothelial cell covered strand arising from the iris and ciliary body stroma. The, the intertrabecular spaces are relatively large and offer little resistance to the passes of aqueous. The corneoscleral meshwork lies external to the uveal meshwork to form the thickest portion of the trabeculum. It is composed of layers of connective tissue strands with overlying endothelial like cells. The intertrabecular spaces are smaller than those of the uveal meshworks con conferring greater resistance to flow. So, the, the juxta can, canalicular meshwork is the outer part of the trabeculum and links the corneoscleral meshwork with the endothelium of the inner wall of the canal of cellums. It consists of cells embedded in a dense extra extracellular matrix with narrow intercellular spaces and offers the major proportion of normal resistance to aqueous outflow. The, the Selim's cana canal is a circumferential channel within the perilimbal sclera. The inner wall is lined by irregular spindle-shaped endothelial cells containing infoldings giant vacuoles that are tho thought to be convey aqueous via the formation of transcellular pores. The outer wall is lined by smooth flat cells and contains the opening of collector channels which leave the canal at the oblique angles and connect directly or indirectly with episcleral veins. Septa commonly divide the lumen into two four channels. Now we will discuss about the physiology. So aqueous flows from the posterior chamber via the pupil into the AC from where it exits the eye via three roots. Trabeculum outflow 90% aqueous flows through the trabeculum into the cellum canal and then the episcleral veins. This is a bulk flow pressure sensitive route so that increasing IOP will increase outflow. Uveal scler uh, scleral drainage 10%. Aqueous passes across the face of the ciliary body into the supracoroidal space and is drained by the venous circulation in the ciliary body. Choroid and sclera. So the iris, some aqueous also drains via the iris. Now we will discuss about the intraocular pressure. So intraocular pressure, pressure is determined by the balance between the rate of aqueous production and its outflow. The latter in turn related to factors that include the resistance 
encountered in the trabeculum and the level of episcleral venous pressure concept of normal intraocular pressure the average iop in the journal population is around 16 mm hg on aplanation donometry and a range of about 11 to 21 mm hg to standard deviation either side of the average has con conventionally been accepted as normal at least for caucasian population less than 21 mm hg whilst others remain unchecked with iop well above this well whilst uh, reduction of the iop is a key modifiable element in essentially all types of glaucoma additional uh, incompletely understood factors are critical in determining whether a particular individual or i develops glaucomatous damage these include features influencing the iop reading such as corneal rigidity and probably factors affecting the susceptibility of the optic nerve to damage such as the integrity of its blood supply and structural vul vulnerability to mechanical stress at the optic nerve head